Okay, we'll call the public works and the planning committee to order. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second. Okay. We just need to back. Call the roll. Can we get the acclimation? Yeah, just all in favor of the minutes. We'll do the acclimation. Yeah. Okay. You have to call the vote. Call the vote. Favor, say aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 Highway department. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. And how are you? Miss Becky, I'm doing just fine. How are y'all? Good, good, good. All right, in uh, front of you, um, we have a budget amendment. Um, what we're doing is this uh, increase. Of, we're increasing our revenue um, of uh, account number 131-44-530 for sale of equipment. Uh, that is, uh, we did a sale for a, our road reclaimer, went to a highway department in Alabama, and then we did a surplus auction on the 26th of October. So those two sales totaled $142,500. That was not in this year's budget for revenue, uh, so we're putting that in as a line item of sale of equipment. With that, we are also increasing our highway equipment uh, expenditure line item 68714 we're putting that 142500 in there also uh, in hopes of purchasing a um, used uh, 140H cat motor grader. Um, we currently have two. One is a 78 model, one is a 75 model and uh, we are hoping to go the used one we are purchasing is a 2007 and uh, We've done the research and, and found our Tennessee annotated laws that allow us to do purchased of used equipment without having to do a bid. We um, sent out and got a certified appraisal on this piece of equipment. Uh, it come in at 169.5. We were able to purchase this used motor grader at 165. So uh, there will be a little savings there. So we're wanting to do this uh, budget amendment to add these increases so that we're able to show the sales of the surplus equipment we had and then also to to make the purchase of the uh, used motor grade. Have any questions or? And what we have is just the revenue. Right, increase. it's just, yeah, it's just a revenue increase because the line item uh, for the revenue, um, there was a zero in there because we didn't know we were going to sell any equipment, but we were able to get it all together and we've had that. And then we are taking that revenue increase right. and right. showing it in our expenditure for highway equipment. Yeah. So it's an increase, increase without a decrease. So we're not having to go to fund balance. We're purchasing off of what we just sold. So we income in and you want to purchase a piece of equipment. What is our obligation? Do we just, uh, I wouldn't Basically, usually prove it. I'm, I, Basically, I mean, basically all y'all have to do is approve this budget amendment. Uh, our highway commission met yesterday morning, approved the budget amendment, and approved the purchase, purchase. of the motor grader. Okay. Yes, sir. It was it was uh, uh, kind of a two-fold thing with all the information provided with them for the motor grader and stuff. Just kind of wanted to give you a little information of, you know, we were able to sell, save a little bit, and now we're able to purchase used equipment. And, not cost any extra money. We're not getting into our till. We're able to to buy off of what we have in our funds now. I make the motion to approve the budget amendment request that's presented. Second. Commissioner Dodd. Yes. Commissioner Cush? Oh, yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Sorrento? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Uh, Chairman Jernigan? Yes. 
All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm going to start with um, building permits. We issued a total of 277 building permits in the month of October, which is up just a little, month, a little bit from last month and up significantly from last year. Um, total fees collected from those building permits is 103715 Of those building permits, 70 of those were single family dwellings as opposed to 55 last month and 56 the same month last year. And I'll wait for everyone to see if they have any questions. Do you happen to know are they, are these 70 spread out? Is there, are you seeing a particular area where a lot of these? Um, the, probably the biggest areas we have are the Eagleville Rockvale area, um, as well as the outside of the Smyrna, Las Casas, that kind of both sides of the Smyrna city limits. That side, so primarily the east side of the county. Okay. And development tax. A uh, total of 209,250 was collected this month. <coughs> and um, pretty evenly broken down in the county. Uh, zoning was uh, 188 total inspections. And I apologize, I just looked at this. So I don't have last year's report on here for you to reference this year compared to last year, so I'll fix that next month and make sure that we've got last year's inspections so we can reference. They're up a little bit this year because we've started doing things just a little bit differently. So for the last, since August, um, our zoning inspections are up significantly, but that's just because we've just, not because the zoning, is, uh, the zoning complaints are up, it's just because we've changed the way we do things a little bit. I've got any questions in there. <coughs> Motion to approve the reports as presented. Second. Can you, do, you, do you recall in, in September on the development tax mm -hmm. that Murfreesboro number was like seven hundred seventeen thousand? Yes, I was on I was on medical leave last month, so I didn't see the Murfreesboro report. Um, but I can only assume that there was significant. Uh, apartment complexes okay. collected the, uh, in September. That's usually what a high number yeah, it's like in ten, Murphy's, ten in Murphy's times Murphy's more than this month. Okay. Correct. Okay. I'll go back and look. It just up really jumps yeah. out there as <laughs> the biggest so far this yeah. year, and then that's typically what that means. Okay. They collect a lot in apartment complexes in Murfreesboro. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, there's a lot of them going up. <laughs> And I believe they just recently lifted the moratorium in Murfreesboro <coughs> for apartment complexes. So. Gotcha. discuss with you today would be the available lot inventory. Uh, we're down to 631 available lots. That's actually down oh, I think 40 or so lots from last month. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of plats recorded uh, for major subdivisions uh, this past month, and we had a, a good number of permits, as, as Candy was just talking about. So the number that you're seeing there, 631, it's really kind of hovered in that range, anywhere from that number up to about 700 really all year long. It's kind of fluctuated up and down a little bit. So I expect that to continue, especially as we get into the winter months where we don't see as much in the apartment activity uh, realm. So uh, there's also on there, you'll see the uh, not recorded class, those that are in some portion of the process, you'll see 
uh, still have a pretty healthy number of lots out there, 3,500 still out there at some uh, portion of the approval process. So uh, if you have no questions on that, I'll go ahead and move into the rezoning report. Uh, we have two rezoning applications for you that will be considered next week. We actually considered three at the last Planning Commission meeting. One of those items, uh, as you see on your report, was withdrawn by the applicant at the Planning Commission. That would be uh, the one by NNH Partnership on East Main Street 3306. Uh, that was ultimately denied by the Planning Commission, and about a week or so later, he officially withdrew the application. Uh, it was still advertised for public hearing just because we do have statutory requirements as far as how many days in advance we have to run an advertisement uh, about these meetings and about the items on the meeting. So uh, we did send a notice, however, uh, out to those affected uh, property owners that were there in 500 feet of that to let them know that that had been withdrawn. So uh, I'll probably have Mayor Burgess ask him just to make an announcement at the beginning of the uh, public hearings that that one has been withdrawn just in case somebody shows up that maybe didn't get a notice about it. But uh, anyway, just so you're aware. Uh, the first of the two requests that you will be considering next week, <coughs> excuse me, the first one's located on Concord Road, uh, 1067, uh, Concord Road. Uh, the applicants wanted to zone the property commercial neighborhood to utilize the property in a manner similar to what it was used for in the past, the neighborhood market. Uh, you can see in your agenda the packets, he's provided a brief description of the, uh, the market at that, uh, that during the, its history. Uh, they also submitted a layout of the subject property, how he proposes to use it. Uh, there wasn't much discussion about this at the Planning Commission's meeting. Uh, there were some questions of the applicant regarding his plans for the property, as well as the possibility of you know, why he was asking for the entire property as opposed to only a portion of the property to be zoned in a commercial manner. Uh, he did indicate he might wish to use some of the gravel area in the back for special events, those kind of things. Uh, ultimately, the Planning Commission did recommend approval. Uh, it was unanimous except for one extension. Uh, extension, excuse me, it was 8-4, none against, and one extension. The other item uh, is a rezoning request for property located along John Brack Highway and Double Springs Road, 301 Double Springs. Uh, the applicant would like to zone the property for speculative purposes. Uh, originally, they were looking to do light industrial zoning, but after discussing what some of the proposed uses the applicant was looking for and uh, the type of zoning that he was looking for, uh, what staff didn't really feel that light industrial was a good classification for that property. We did recommend uh, one of the commercial zones, maybe commercial services or commercial general. Uh, he's looking at possibly uh, something like a uh, community assembly type use, something like that possibly. Uh, it's not just a, a super large piece of property, so it'll be limited as far as how intense it really can be. Of course, and, and septic soils, that thing will kind of limit all that. Ultimately, he did agree to go to commercial general as opposed to a light industrial classification, so I was, uh, was glad that he did. Uh, there is an existing single family structure on the property. If the property is zoned to commercial, that would render the use as non conforming. The use can continue as long as it's not discontinued for greater than 30 months. Uh, so, and that's based on our zoning ordinance. If it's continued or discontinued, excuse me, for longer than that, or if his property is redeveloped, he would lose that grandfathering status. But if it is zoned and he just wants to sit on it for a while, provided the residential unit continues to be in use, there shouldn't be any issue with that. Uh, there was some discussion from the Planning Commission regarding the applicant's concept plan. Uh, other than that, there really weren't any other questions. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval by a unanimous vote. And those are the two zoning uh, hearings that we have for you today. I have one other item to bring to your attention. I don't know if you want to have any questions on that report first before I go on to that. Or go ahead and listen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the last item that's on your iPads is in regards to it's called the uh, I-24 Smart Corridor Executive Summary. Uh, this is a project that was initiated by TDOT, uh, along with the Metropolitan Area Nashville Metropolitan Area Planning Organization, the MPO as well as the uh, governments of the Metropolitan Nashville, Davidson County, Laverne, Smyrna, Murfreesboro, Rutherford County, Sheriff's Office, and whatnot. Uh, as you can see on Exhibit A, which is the last page of that document, it's a study that uh, has been ongoing for the last few months. Uh, I-24 and uh, also uh, US-41, these are integral parts of the Nashville Regional Transportation Network and are used for both commuting traffic and freight. Uh, traffic volumes, as everybody who has gone down that route knows, have experienced exponential growth in the last several years. Uh, actually, since 2005, they've increased by more than 60% in the Murfreesboro-Rutherford County segments of I-24 alone. 
uh, to respond to the increased traffic demand, TDOT has initiated what's called an active traffic management pilot project along this corridor, uh, which they're calling again the I-24 Smart Corridor in partnership with all the local agencies we discussed. Essentially what the goal of this plan is, is to look at different options that they have to possibly integrate freeway and arterial roadway elements. You can see on that executive summary on Exhibit A, there's a, a number of different uh, strategies that they're going to uh, evaluate, such as active freeway management, uh, ramp metering systems where you know, they only let so many cars on and off based on how many cars are actually on the highway itself, uh, connected vehicle, autonomous vehicle deployment, traffic, I'm sorry, travel demand management, a lot of different things using the shoulder, part-time shoulder use for planning and coordination. Essentially, they're taking all of these tools and they're looking at what would be the best fit in the I-24 corridor, and it stretches from 440 to, as you see in there, from 440, which is exit 53, to exit 81 here in Rutherford County, which would be South Church Street. Uh, basically, what we're asking to do with this tonight and what the, the uh, TDOT and the uh, project uh, consultants are asking, they'd like to have buy-in from all of the different uh, organizations that are represented on this committee and myself and our engineer Mike Hughes we've been attending these uh, meetings that they have uh, there's no funding or anything tied to this it's really just as you can see on the page two uh, we support the implementation of this project we support the overall goals of this project as described in the resolution and that we will continue to participate in the technical advisory committee to finalize these uh, recommendations which is something that we're doing currently so uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, and this would be signed by the mayor, of course, but uh, we just, uh, and the project sponsors would like to know as they're trying to pursue these alternatives and any funding for these alternatives that they have buy-in from everybody along the route. Uh, so uh, that's uh, essentially what the, they're asking for, uh, for us and all the other organizations to do on here. The, the format of this may change just a little bit. You know, we may have to put it in our format, you know, for our resolutions. And also, they've sent another one, similar exact wording here to the Sheriff's Department, because they're also involved, uh, the Sheriff's Office, the State Highway Patrol. Uh, so I asked if it was possible to just have, you know, one resolution with both the County Mayor and the County Sheriff on it, rather than having two separate documents. And so, uh, but other than that, it's the same wording. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So Doug, this document's going to county mayor, city mayor, sheriff's department, yes, sir. everybody. Correct. All, all the stakeholders. That's correct. City county. Yes, sir. And you said this is not. They're not asking for financial. They're just. They're just asking for. A, right. They haven't got to the point. They're working toward that where they start putting costs to everything. Now that may come in the future, but yeah. as of right now, all they're asking for is just yes, we're on board with the project. Really, is all they're asking. So does this obligate us for financial support? Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, ultimately it does. I mean, at some point, if they ever decide to start implementing some of these strategies, I would anticipate that there would be some cost sharing of some sort, you know, amongst the governing authorities along the route, depending on where. Obviously, they're going to have they may have different strategies in Rutherford County than they would in Davidson County, you know, Metro Nashville. So. Regardless that, that's still, I'm sorry. Good. Regardless of what they choose to do, we'll still be obligated for financial support. Well, that that's still, like I said, that's still kind of. They're still trying to figure all that out. I don't I think, think this document here does it say that we're obligated for any financial support. This is just the, a good faith commitment that we'll participate in this planning and discussion as the time goes forward. Which again is what we're currently doing right now. Anyway. Yeah, it will be nominal local support and whether we're part of it or not. I, Murfreesboro and Smyrna have got some signalization things going on already that we don't have a party, party in. Mm -hmm. So they've already joined the project then? Well, this is all still in planning, but I mean they've had some more serious discussions with some of those folks about how that may impact because this is both <clears throat> 24 and I-41. I mean, not I-41, but US-41. US Those two connect together. There are all kinds of places where you come from one to the other, and this is going to try to control and manage 
I moved. Three lights and 16 exits. It's great. Yeah, so that's, there's a lot of interaction. Well, the three points of the resolution, I certainly support on page two. Mm -hmm. conclusion that's page that's two. all you're committing to, we're committing yeah. to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, on those three, do we, do we, uh, make a motion to to allow the mayor to sign this is that the, the first step here before it goes to the full commission it's just you know, you're asked We're to just support this resolution of support and execute it thereof it requires a motion from us to yeah, yes yeah we really can't sign any documents without commission approval uh, i'll make a motion to uh, allow the mayor to participate in this resolution as per the three Points on page two. Second. Motion. Second. Call a roll. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. where, hey, Doug, where can we find a printed version of this? This three page uh, of the resolution. I can, I can email it to you. Okay. Yeah. We, need we, need your, we need to approve your report, too. Uh, make a motion to approve. Second. Made and second. All in favor? Aye. Does the entire committee want a copy of that resolution? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll there, let you know. There's a much bigger document that describes it, what they're proposing to do in a lot more detail. But it's that. many pages, but we can give you that as well. The scope of work. I can send you that. The scope of work. Yes. Yes. All right. Solid waste and landfill. Good evening. Thank you so much. This past Saturday, we had our fall household hazardous waste collection. And very well attended. Very well attended. 293 households were represented and collected 10,838 pounds. That's great. How much? 10,838 pounds. Hmm. Uh, the largest was uh, non flammable liquids, which they find is antifreeze and soaps. And that was almost 4,000 pounds of that. But by <coughs> having a good attendance, uh, last Saturday, plus a, a good attendance in May, we had two this year. The first time we had two in a long time. The TDEC officials that were there Saturday said we need to go ahead and apply for two next year. And, and we've already sent in information to do that. So if we get what we request, it'll be the first Saturday of April and the first Saturday of November. But they have not approved that yet. On our landfill, you see your normal report there. Uh, of that normal report that you see, uh, $132,000 was collected, and then we gave away $3,357 in free tipping. Uh, but landfill business was really busy last month, busier than normal. Uh, we wound up with uh, 40, 4,400 tons. Normally we're at 35. Uh, but We've gotten the documentation in where we've done the surveys and did all the calculations. At, and then the calculation was done at 3,200 tons a month. We will be full and closed sometime in May. But with this amount of volume coming in, that number is going to get, or that date is going to get nearer quicker. And that's on the county landfill. Who received the free tippings? Uh, residents get up to one ton at no charge. Uh, City of Mercerboro, Smyrna, Laverne, and Eagleville, in a resolution years ago, could tear down up to three homes and bring to us at no charge. Mercerboro's the only one that ever does that, and they never go over three. They always do their calendar to where it works out for them, but, uh, but that's where most, most all the free tipping comes. And then, of course, you know, the parks and recs and things like that get, get free too. Any questions on the landfill? All right, we'll go to the convenience center side. The convenience centers have been busy as well. Recycle centers, excuse me, let me name them correctly. Um, looking on the very last page and looking at the totals for, you know, month of uh, October of 17 versus 16, 
we had a 227 ton increase in compactor trash and 144 ton increase in open top trash. Mm -hmm. And you divide that by the average weight of a load, that's right at 90 extra loads that was hauled. Uh, we're a fairly small department. We have a total of 11 drivers if everybody's at work. You know, so it's a struggle to keep up with that, but, but my guys have done pretty well with it. Some of them are working overtime, and uh, of course the mechanic and the, the uh, truck maintenance guy gets in a truck as well. Kathy's been out all this month, so I've not been in a truck, but I, I'll get in a truck when I get have the opportunity. It's more fun than being in the office anyway. But any questions on the reports? Make a motion to approve. Second. Need to call the roll. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you know when the advisory committee will meet again? I don't think there is a date in set. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we were hoping to try to do one before Christmas, but we've gotten late enough into it. I don't know it would be okay. able to get that thing pulled off. All right. But there's a lot of information out there that needs to be, and decisions need to be made. Yeah. That still has momentum. It's dragging along. Yeah. Uh, dealing with five governments all at the same time is excruciatingly slow. Uh, and government's slow enough on its own anyway. Uh, you know, just trying to get a decision. Uh, part of the problem with it is it's not n next week. It's not next month. It's not next year. So with it being that far off, a lot of people are not concerned with it. But by the time you make the decision on what you're going to do, you do all your site plans, you do your building plans, and you start building whatever it is you're going to build. Of course, you have to have local and state permits to do all that. But some of the state permits can take as much as a year to get approved. So, you know, if we're looking at five or six years and a project that's going to take two to four to build, we're going to be really pushed for time. You know, so that's the reason I'm pushing real hard, trying to get some decisions made. You know, if we wait for the last minute, we're just going to hurt ourselves really, really bad. Uh, I've been doing some speaking engagements, and, and the, the options are, are, are already out there, They've been told publicly. First option is to do nothing, which truly is an option, but it's not a very good one. You know, another option is to, to uh, have a waste energy facility, which is very expensive, not sure we can afford it. Uh, another one is to build transfer stations in, in a recycle facility. If the city of Mercerboro is going to do curbside collection for recycle, there needs to be a processing facility here. Uh, Getting through town in a garbage truck from the south side of town all the way to the north side of town is about a 35, 40 minute trip. Uh, transfer stations work out when you're you know, normally 35 miles away, but that's not county going through city. Uh, and then once you get at the landfill, uh, they're in a tight spot and I've been waiting on their next sale to be built. So we sometimes spend as much as an hour waiting in line. So, you know, transfer station is something we could use tomorrow. And of course, the, the Fourth option would be to go for an expansion on the landfill. None of those options are going to be popular because every one of them is going to cost more money. Expansion on which landfill? The counties or the No, ours, ours is construction demolition. It'd be trying to see if public would, Republic would be interested in going for an expansion. Is it even possible? We'd have to talk to them and find out. But is there property? Is there? Well, if they redesigned their permit, they could go taller. There's some property in front. They've got property on the side. You know, that would be one to see if they're even willing to do it. And then if they are willing to do it, then they'd have to figure out how they do it. Could they excavate our site and redistribute that? It, it could there perhaps be some components of ours could be exported? Or uh, that would be a possibility, but to, you know, to do that, and then you're going to have to uh, put ours up for sale, basically. You know, it's a county asset and it has to go after the bid process and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, so it's smart that they ever get excavated, get a handle on it. I'd like, to, on I'd like to see that happen, but it, you know, I don't know that if you look at the the financial side of it, by the time you spend all the money to do it and you got the garbage coming in, can you actually make money at it? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're in business to make money, so if they can't make money, they're not going to do it. 
And of course, the general public's not going to be real pleased with that either. You know, so it's a lot of really tough questions to answer, and not everybody's going to be happy no matter which way you go. Yeah. I've recently heard a lot of interesting things about Waste Away. I think you presented some stuff to us a year ago or several months ago. We, we did another tour. We've been up there at least twice, and I've been up there three times but these years ago. Uh, Waste Away takes municipal garbage, household garbage, uh, not any construction demolition type stuff and no furniture. Uh, the last time we were there, there was a, a, a furniture manufacturer that was sending some of their trash in. So like the, the cushions that would go on the sofa, they pull those out separately. Uh, the uh, blue jean type material, they were pulling out separately. Two reasons, one, going through the machines it could, the blue jeans could tie up the machines, and two, they're actually a recyclable commodity, so there's two reasons to pull that out. Uh, their process is to go through a shredder, and it grinds up the, the trash in a more manageable form, and then it goes through several magnets and eddy currents and glass breakers to try to get the glass and the metals out of it, uh, grind it up uh, into really small pieces. They have a hydrolyzer, is what they call it. Uh, to me, it's misnamed. To me, hydrolyzer would be putting water in. Their hydrolyzer uh, creates enough steam and pressure that it actually ruptures the cell walls of the material. Uh, basically the same thing you do with popcorn. When it pops, it turns inside out. And when that happens, it releases a lot of that moisture out of it. So they can get the moisture content way down. And when they finish through that process, it goes through a sterilization process as well. So it's non-pathogen, non infectious and all those things and it comes out as a fluff. Uh, just a, a fluffy, uh, trying to think what is what are you, almost like a ground up tri type of straw spaghetti mix. Uh, and then that fluff is actually a fuel. Uh, the problem that they, and then they have another process, they can take that fluff and run it through another machine and create a pellet. And the pellet would be fuel and depending on how you cut it and mash it, what size pellet you wind up with, so they could custom fit that pellet for whatever fuel source that they need. Uh, the cool thing about the pellet, uh, the large one comes out about the size of your thumb, and it's kind of a waxy feel to it and smells like a crayon. And of course it's you know, not harmful or anything else, and it can be stored outside for, don't hold me to it, but I think they said up to two years without degrading and still be used for a fuel. And it's, it's, winds up in a similar BTU as coal. But their problem right now is they cannot find a buyer for that fuel. They have the mechanism to produce it, but they don't have anybody that wants to buy it. So what they're doing with their process now is, is making custom orders for people to test. You know, so they're running you know, different tests on the, on the, the fluff and the pellets uh, to ship it. The fluff, you can get 11 pounds per cubic foot. And if they pack it real tight, real hard, they can get almost 20 tons in a tractor trailer. In the pellet form, they can get 32 pounds per cubic foot. So, you know, transportation costs and all those things. But it depends on what they want to fuel for. Uh, the cement kilns, which there's not really any here locally, uh, like the fluff, because it kind of floats down through there and burns and, and creates an ash. And, a, and once they finish with that, ash product and they put it back through the system and it goes back into the concrete. Uh, the pellets would fall through too quickly. You know, so depending on what you're going to try to use it for fuel source for is to depend on which which type fuel you want. But it's a, I think it's a good process. I think it's got some sound engineering behind it. But they and when we met with them, the president of the company is trying to get everybody to test it and try to develop a market for it. So if we had that process, we could densify our trash into those one of those products, but we don't have a home for it at this point. So some of you went to the city of Lebanon, saw the PhD energy system on their wastewater sewage plant. Uh, they're grinding wood waste, tire waste, and mixing uh, sewer sludge with it, and that's the, the fuel source to create electricity electricity is designed to go right back into the plant to run the plant. Uh, so PhD Energy, which is sold, is now called Aries, but they're, they would have some of those pellets and running it with their system to see if their system will run on them. Uh, 
uh, and they've just started those tests. I don't know any results from those yet. Uh, but a, a system that type scenario, if you wanted to do waste energy and you had the, the private partnerships that you would need, you could have a PhD style unit sit next to a building, the waste to waste type process to create the fuel and truck it to that building. That way all your garbage is out of town somewhere and supply them fuel. But you know, there was a whole lot of things would have to come together to make that work. And to solve our problem, we're going to have to really look for uh, private partnerships. Tax base will not be able to fund what we're going to have to fund on, on solid waste. So we're going to need some partnerships and private industry and involved in it. You know, it may be county-owned buildings and privately ran, or I don't know how you develop those. You know, it, there's a lot of different scenarios on how you can. You just you know have to find one that works. But the waste of energy you know, on a big, large scale would need a, a user, and electricity is not really a good one. Uh, the only way you could do it with electricity is have the user right there, and it basically taking them off the grid. You know, if you're selling it to TBA, you get nothing for it. Or if you had a steam user. I don't know if any of you have ever been in my office. Back in the early 70s, the county looked at a system really similar to what the Nashville Thermal Plant used to be. And if you read through the, the booklet that came with it, that was intended to work with Firestone, which is now called Bridgestone, and it was to generate the steam for them. But it never got built. You know, so the county has looked at such things years and years ago, but we've never done anything with it. Any other questions? Where's the next closest landfill that could take our trash? Lewisburg. Lewisburg. Mm -hmm. By car, because uh, I used to work right there at the landfill. Uh, by car, if you go through Chapel Hill, the, the back roads, it's about an hour, 15 minutes. You go around 840, it's about an hour. Uh, by truck, of course, it's going to be longer than that. The trucks won't travel as fast, and they'll get up and go with, you know, back and forth as quickly. Uh, and then once you get off at exit 32, turn in towards Lewisburg, it's about four and a half miles up there on the left. They've recently been awarded a, an expansion for 20 years. Uh, that expansion is based on the amount of volume they have current, currently coming in. So if our trash started going there or any of the other 19, 18 counties that are going to Middle Point started going there, then their 20 year life expectancy just got much shorter. Have you had any contact with any of the other 18 counties and see what they're looking at to do? I was invited to go to uh, Nashville a few weeks ago. Joy Smith and I were invited to go. TDEC set up a meeting with the uh, uh, Greater Nashville region, Davidson County, and they invited all the surrounding counties and cities to one meeting to talk about garbage. Uh, Nashville's in the only other large, the only other county as far as we know doing a similar process that we're doing, trying to figure out what to do. Uh, they're wanting to go zero waste. And zero waste is truly impossible because you always have something that's not going to burn. It's, so you're going to have to have a landfill component somewhere. Their zero definition is actually 90, which 90 uh, we believe is actually doable. You know, high 80s to 90% is probably doable, uh, forcing people to do stuff. But in that meeting, what Davidson County was really wanting is one of the other surrounding counties to hold up their hand and said, yep, we'll have your landfill for you. Their process is we'll not have a landfill in Davidson County, and uh, they don't want any waste energy in Davidson County. But they do, or they are thinking about having a food compost facility. Now, which there's one of those here in Rutherford County. It's just now getting up and started, so we don't hear much from it. But it's uh, Hoover Rock Quarry off of um, Jefferson Pike over there towards Smyrna. It's right over there close to that. Uh, and those guys actually came to see me a few days ago. Uh, they're looking at trying to generate the food waste and of course we have the school waste. Uh, but they're starting out, according to them, just wood waste and sewer sludge, Smyrna's sewer sludge. And then they're going to do compost in there and then grow it from there. You know, so there's a lot of things going on, there's a lot of possibilities, but just trying to get them all pulled together and figure out which one is the right one and which one is the long term answer. You said the county would close in May. 
could close before that. Just depending on how quickly we fill up. And then the option for what you're taking is Republic, right? Yes. Or going out of the county somewhere else. The leachate, has it uh, subsided? No. You haven't been back for money lately. No, we, uh, we haven't been. We'll probably wind up coming back before the budget year is over. But the, uh, you know, the, the thought process was when we'd get all the dirt covered over the top of it, everything else, the leachate would stop. It has not stopped. Uh, we've already spent close to $70,000 this year, this budget year on leachate. Thank you.